I hope this makes sense to you guys. So if our circle is in this position where our point is faced up, Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to derive the equations of motion for a cycloid. If you don't know what a cycloid is, here's once again a little gif for you my boys. Right, right here, here's a little gif. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be way easier than deriving the cardioid equations. But you really enjoyed this video, so why not talk more about this um, elementary geometry you could say. Okay, we have just seen what a cycloid is. So we have the circle right here, starting somewhere here. Okay, that's an absolutely perfect egg I have here. And it's going to trace out a little form right here, something like this, okay? That actually looks quite okay. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, then we have the circle rolling. For example, we have this position right here. Okay, it's going to correspond to this point right here. Also, we have this uppermost point up here. And it's going to roll up until this point and up. Then it just continues rolling once again. So that's the same position as this one right here. Now, I would like to work with translations once again. Coordinate transformations, meaning if we want to find out where a point is in an original coordinate system, we can make use of the fact that we can shift this coordinate system to be somewhere else and then take a look at where this point right here, this P, P prime in this case, is going to be in this new coordinate system. Meaning our point P prime then is going to correspond to some X prime, Y prime coordinate being nothing but the coordinate of P in the original coordinate system minus AB. If you don't know what I'm talking about, take a look at my cardioid video. I've explained it quite well there. Okay, at first I would like to find out where our center is going to be all the time of the circle. Because after that we can just place our new coordinate system in this very center and find out where our point P, P prime is going to be in this new coordinate system all the time. So that's quite a powerful strategy. So we have the circle rolling. Here's our center at the beginning. Then a bit further, here's our center then. Then a bit further, our center is here. Meaning this really doesn't change. Our radius is going to stay the same all the time. Meaning our center is going to stay right on one new axis, you could say. Meaning our center is going to consist of some A and B coordinate, where our B coordinate corresponds to the height, where our center is. Meaning this is nothing but our radius rho r whatsoever. Let's call it rho. But what about this up here, our x coordinate? What about that? Well, we can talk about this kind of intuitively, actually, because you see, at first our circle is somewhere here, then it's going to roll a little bit. Meaning, for example, if it rolls this distance right here, it corresponds to this part, for example, of our arc around the circle, of our circumference, meaning, the length we have rolled is actually just a fraction of our circumference. Meaning if our circle rolled this completely, it has turned 360 degrees, 2 pi. Meaning our x distance traveled is going to correspond to, well, 2 pi times rho, the whole circumference. If we just have half the distance traveled, well, then it corresponds to pi over 2, um, no, just pi times rho, and so on and so forth. Meaning, this is just a formula for the arc length that you probably already know. Our x coordinate is going to correspond to, well, our angle rolled, we are going to call it theta, times our radius rho. Okay, and down here we have just our rho. I hope this makes sense to you guys. So if our circle is in this position, where our point is faced up right here, our point P, it has rolled 180 degrees, meaning our distance traveled is just going to correspond, um, if this right here was our angle, theta, okay, our 
rolled angle theta and at this point it was 2 pi. Then this corresponds to 2 pi times our radius rho. Okay, I just want to explain it a bit further. But here, for example, if we just traveled half the distance of this cycloid structure, then our angle theta is nothing but pi and it has rolled half the circumference. So meaning this is just pi times rho. So you see, our angle theta pi corresponds to pi times rho, our angle theta 2 pi corresponds to 2 pi times rho and so on. Meaning our angle rho corresponds to theta times rho. What do we have down here? Now we have find, found out where our center is actually all the time. Meaning we can place our new coordinate system somewhere. So this was our initial position. Okay, that's fine. Then it has rolled quite a lot. Now it's here, our circle. And now we are going to place a new coordinate system in here. Okay. This is our new point, P prime with an X prime and Y prime coordinate. Okay, it has rolled pretty far. You can take a look at many different situations right here. What is our rolled angle that we actually have? Well, our angle that we have rolled up until now is from start, meaning it lies here somewhere. So here it has rolled zero degrees, but right here it has rolled this distance right here, where we can just connect this as being a vector, our P prime vector in this new coordinate system. So it has rolled up until here. This is our rolled angle theta. How can we make sense of this theta? What is this theta all the time in this new coordinate system? Well, if we just say that this vector p right here, p prime, spans out a little triangle using this new x prime axis that we have right here, then well, let's say this right here is phi, okay? Then we have, um, this is our length rho, this is our x prime coordinate, this is our y prime coordinate. Then our angle theta that we have, is nothing but, okay, if this right here is our phi, then this is, this quarter right here is just pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two. So this is nothing but three pi over two minus phi. This is going to be our angle rho that we have right here in this situation. And you can do it differently. You can work with this quadrant right here or this quadrant right here. Okay, our p prime. It's going to be, if we use Papa Pythagoras, nothing but, okay, x prime, y prime coordinate, meaning it's nothing but um, rho times the cosine of phi, but phi is nothing but 3 pi over 2 minus theta. Same spiel down here. just with the sign this time. Okay, Coolio, you can break this up into the real and imaginary part of the complex exponential function. Overall, you can factor out this e to the i, 3 pi over 2, and you are going to notice this is just a shifted sine wave. So you can also take a look at this graph right here for the cosine. This is it in the normal case. If we shifted pi over 2 to the left, it's going to be um, this thing right here. If we shifted pi to the left, it's going to be negative cosine. And if we shift it more pi over two to the left, <laughs> it's going to be nothing but um, this right here, the sine in this case. So it's going to be rho times the sine of negative theta. And down here, it's going to be rho times here in this case, it's the negative cosine of theta. Sine of negative theta is nothing but negative sine of theta. So we are going to get common factor of negative rho that we can bring to the outside. And then we have the sine of theta and this cosine of theta vector. And then we are already done because we have found out where our p prime is all the time. Meaning we can just solve for our point P initially right here in this initial coordinate system. Meaning our point P consisting of an X and Y coordinate is nothing but, well, X prime, Y prime plus AB. And we can just plug this chunk into here that we have gathered. So 
a and b is nothing but, um, okay, we have a common factor of a common scalar of rho, rho, theta one, and then positive, okay, it's going to be negative right here, negative rho, sine of theta, cosine of theta. If you want, you can factor out some more stuff. So for example, this rho right here, so this is nothing but rho, and then we are going to get theta minus sine of theta, and then we have one minus the cosine of theta. Whatever you do, this right here is our answer, and I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like. If you want to support channel a bit more, you know how you can do it. Despite those t-shirts I created, this is not one of them, but I think it looks quite good on me. It fits me so well, just like with most of the stuff that I'm wearing. I'm only wearing the stuff that I'm feeling comfortable in. <laughs> Anyways, um, what else can I say? Thank you guys for watching and I love you guys. Appreciate you. See ya.